Hey guys, Mike Bills. Welcome back to another video. As you guys can see, we have a ton of very large boxes here. So basically what's in these boxes is a DIY 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery kit from Yingjing, as well as 16 LFP cells directly from China. This came from the United States warehouse. These came from China. So these did take a little bit to get. We're gonna get all this stuff unboxed. I'm gonna lay everything out. We're gonna kind of talk about, go over some of the specs of the battery case kit, as well as the cells themselves. Make sure none of the cells are damaged and all that good stuff. So on the channel, we've kind of played with all the different types of batteries you can get for solar. We've done the full DIY route with the cow pack where we built our own raw cow cells into a pack. We've brought server rack batteries. We've bought four individual 12 volt batteries and wired them in series. But the only thing we haven't done yet is one of these battery kits. These are extremely cost effective and they're very popular and a ton of people have been using them and seem to have really good luck with them. So I'm very excited to be able to build my own. This is gonna add an additional 15 kilowatt hours of capacity to my system. So I'm very excited about that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get everything out of the boxes, lay everything out so we can take a close look of what we actually have here. So in each of the eight boxes, we should have two cells and it's really nice that they ship two at a time because they can put a lot of foam on the boxes. And some of the boxes do look a little bit beat up, but overall they all look okay. Also, I have no idea what cells they actually sent me. I just ordered them from a link. Oh yeah, these are nice. Check these guys out. Super nice. And it's a little bit hard to see, but these are 314 amp hour cells and they have the nice double hole terminal post. So what you're looking at here is 16 kilowatt hours worth of batteries. So the 314 amp hour batteries times 3.2 volts, that's a little over a thousand watt hours per battery. I've never done a battery build with the blue prismatic cells. I've seen a bunch of other YouTubers do it, but I've never had my hands on these. All right, now we're gonna get the battery kit laid out. Here's kind of what the box is gonna look like. A little bit of information there. And here's a close up of the actual battery box itself. Those latches on the side there are actually to stack these things. So you can actually stack multiple units up high to kind of save on some space. Looks like we have dual terminals for your positive, your negative, you got your little on and off button there. This is gonna be your main breaker. Feels pretty stout. We got some status LEDs here, some communication ports here, and a big hole where we're gonna install the screen. Right here, these are gonna be our balancing circuit boards. And this is where we're gonna connect all the balance leads. As you guys can see, they're already pre-attached to the board. And then we have these main header connectors here. These main headers are we're gonna to connect to the BMS. So it's nice that it's like that. This actually also acts as a structural component and they just integrated the balance board into that. So that's really cool. You also have a temp sensor here, temp sensor here. And then they're also labeled A and B. So make sure you don't mix that up because it's gonna be very important when we go to connect the balancer. If you get these mixed up, you could potentially damage the BMS. So that's something I'm gonna be very keen about because I've heard other people have had issues doing that and I don't wanna have that issue. It comes with all the foam padding we're gonna need for the cells as well as the fiberglass insulation boards that are gonna go all around the cells to insulate it from the case itself. This is gonna be all our bolts and nuts and hardware. So in this first little box, it says BMS. Oh, this is gonna be our screen. So that's cool. And this is gonna be everything else. We got our little fire extinguisher module right here, our terminal covers. Looks like we get some dust vents to put on the side. These are gonna be all our terminal bolts, our bus bars. We have an ethernet cable, as well as our dry contact connection right there, that little green plug. And I'm not really sure what these are, but I guess we'll find out. The inside of this thing has a lot of gusseting, very thick material. It did get a tiny bit damaged on the corner, which you really can't see right here. Right here, there's a little bit of a dent from shipping, but that's not a big deal. The rest of the box looks okay. It's a nice thick bracing in there. It's gonna be real sturdy because they make these able to stack. It's gotta be very strong. So in here is actually gonna be our BMS. As you guys can see, it's tucked in there. We're gonna see more of that in a minute. It comes with a 200 amp JK BMS. So it's a very solid BMS. It's got a built-in fire suppressor. It's got a built-in breaker. It's got built-in communication. So you can actually set this up to communicate with your inverter if you want to. And on the website, there is a ton of information about the BMS. If you wanna see more about that, I will leave a link in the description. So I'd recommend you guys check that out if you want more specifics of it. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing slapped together. It does look relatively simple. The only instructions they give you unfortunately is this little piece of paper here. So I assume it's gonna be quite easy. All the videos I've seen about these seem to be like they're pretty simple. I'm gonna to try to show some key parts and kind of just speed through the rest of this. And that's it, so let's get this thing built. I'm having to do this on the floor because right now my lab and solar setup is pretty packed. Also, I have some huge updates coming for our 40 volt off-grid solar power system. So probably pretty shortly after this video, you're gonna see another video and we have some major changes coming to this setup and I'm very excited to talk about but this video is gonna be focused on the battery.
All right, I'm gonna start putting the foam on the cells, but one thing I noticed, the cells actually aren't labeled for positive and negative, but I went ahead and checked them with a meter just to verify all the voltages were the same anyways before we connect them all. And the terminal furthest away from the QR code is gonna be your positive. So I did go ahead and recheck all those, and just to be sure, I'm gonna put a little plus right here on the terminal, that way I don't get those confused. Now this part's very important, but on the diagram here on the instructions, it's pretty clear how to connect and hook up the cells. There we go, first one installed, 15 more to go. Okay guys, we got all the cells installed in the box with the foam padding and there is foam on each side. So right here, both cells have foam. Right here, both cells have foam. All the cells have foam. There is a teeny amount of play between the cells, but they are pretty tight in there. I wonder if I should maybe shim it up and make it just a little bit tighter, but I've seen a bunch of other videos on these packs and no one ever seems to really bother with that. So we're just gonna run it as it is. That's our main positive, gonna be right here. Negative to positive. I will say guys, this is kind of the most dangerous part of the job because once you connect all your bus bars, the battery will technically be live. So be careful touching terminals, dropping metal tools, wearing rings, all that good stuff. Be very safe. Take your time wiring it up. If you're not sure, ask or watch a video or do something. And I am gonna go through and torque all these when I'm done. The torque spec according to the instructions is five to six newton meters. So not very tight. These are aluminum terminals. They're very easy to strip. So keep that in mind. All right, just to make sure we have the banks wired right, we should have about 20 something volts per two bank. Okay, we have 26.27 volts on this bank, 26.27 on the other bank. So when we combine them with this last bus bar, we're gonna have our full voltage at these two terminals right there. So that's gonna be our main positive and that's gonna be our main negative. As I was putting the battery together, the one thing that kept bothering me is how much play is in the cells. It's not a lot and honestly, it probably wouldn't cause any issues, but I do wanna shim it up just a little bit. So I did go ahead and 3D print a two millimeter thick shim. This one just finished. I'm gonna take this shim. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to take all the bus bars and all these other bars back off. And I'm just gonna stick it right there and that should tighten it up just a little bit more and add a little bit, teeny tiny bit more compression. And I would feel just a little bit better about that. Cause right now they're just, there is movement, especially on this cell. So I do wanna tighten that up just a little bit. So I'm gonna do all that off camera and then I'll pick back up once we get the shims installed and I'll show you all how much more snug everything is. All they have to do to make the kit a little bit better and in order to have people not have that issue is maybe include a couple more of these fiberglass boards. That way you can create your own shim pack using those boards and just kind of tighten everything up. I don't think you have to go crazy with the compression on these, but I think at least you don't want any play back and forth. Now there is some space as well on the side of the cell. So if you look right here, so maybe I'll print a couple more shims just to stick right there as well, but definitely want to shim the end. So I'm going to get all the shims in place. And once we're done, I'll pick back up and show you what the final product looks like. I am also going to get all the bus bars put on and torqued. So the final bus bar is going to be right there with two more balance wires. And then we can connect the main BMS connections, which are those two right there. And then the harness, put the balance harness on, and this will pretty much be ready to go. All right, we got our 3D printed shims installed. And as y'all can see, way less room, no wiggle room at all. It fits snug in there, but I don't think it was dangerously tight and I could still remove it if I needed to. And all the cells are nice and snug. I also pushed all the cells toward the middle because there is a little bit of room between the, between the sides as well. So I pushed all the cells in the middle, installed the shims, and now this thing's nice and tight. We got all our bus bars on. I'm gonna put the last big bus bar on here, and that's actually gonna take both eight cell banks, combine them into a 16 cell battery, which means right here and here are gonna be our 40 volt out, and these are gonna be completely live. They'll be really careful. Here we go. All right, now we're gonna make the main connections to the BMS. And also one other thing I'd recommend, I would probably wait till the end to put the last bus bar down at the bottom like we did just a second ago, only because if you don't connect that bus bar, these will not be live. In my case, they're live, so I'm just gonna have to be really careful, but just keep that in mind. 
All right, so now we're gonna take our ribbon cables for our BMSs. We're gonna plug our white one in first and this one second. I'm gonna do this one second because this is the second group of cells and normally that's how you connect a BMS. I'm a little bit nervous because I've heard of people burning these up doing this wrong. Okay, there we go. There's no smoke coming out of nothing. Now we're gonna take our screen. I'm gonna go ahead and plug the screen in and then the screen's gonna be adhered into the case with this 3M adhesive and then there's just plastic on it. Actually, before I do that, I did forget to hook up the main positive for the BMS. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect that right there to our main positive. The display's plugged in. I guess I'm gonna power it on and see what happens. I think that's all the connections we have to make. I do have the main breaker off so the terminals will not be live. Oh, okay. It says we have an alarm. All right, looks like the screen is working. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the screen fully. There we go. All right, now that the screen's installed, I'm gonna go ahead and power it back on. There might be a little bit of setup that we have to do. Also, for anyone who's curious, this bag of wires you're not gonna use this is essentially another balance harness, but it's unterminated in case you wanted to make your own custom balancing harness for your batteries. And it's also got the temp sensors built into there as well. Right now it's reading 40 amp hours, which is not correct. But if we go to packs, click on that, it is showing all of our cell voltages one through 16. So those are all good. So I'm gonna have to just figure out how to configure this thing to make it 314 amp hours and reset the state of charge which may have to be fully charged in order for that to work correctly. And it doesn't look like there's much we can do from the screen, so I'm gonna ha probably have to connect through it with my phone through the Bluetooth module. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There we go, I was able to easily connect to this with the same BMS app that I use on our CalPax, which also have JK BMSs. So now I'm gonna go through here and configure everything to make sure it's all working, and then I'll pick it back up once we're done with that. There we go, this pack's 100% ready to go. I did go ahead and set the amp hours, set the voltages how I wanted on the cells, cleared all the warnings that we had, reset the password, and all that good stuff. So this thing is 100% ready to go. The only thing now that we have to do is fully charge the battery, give it a good top balance. That way the amp hour counter resets and everything should be really accurate. I'm gonna go ahead and go through and torque all our terminals one more time, double check all our connections, zip tie up a couple loose wires that are in here. I'm also gonna install our little fire suppressor unit right here, and this just has a little temp sensor, so it's very easy to connect. And I will show you guys that once it's fully installed, that way you guys at home can see how it's done. Now these little guys right here are just some dust screens, and they're gonna go right on the side of the battery right here to help just kind of keep dust and stuff out of the BMS area. And that's really it. Now I just need to make a set of leads so we can connect this to the main 48 volt solar power system. Okay guys, that's pretty much it. The battery's fully assembled where everything is good to go. We did go ahead and install our fire suppressor. It's gonna go right here. It doesn't really show it in the included video. All it does is show you how to route the wire. All we gotta do now is put the cover on and get it connected. We have our Ying Sing battery completely commissioned and hooked up. We just have a set of six gauge wires running to paralleled with these two golf cart batteries, which is definitely not ideal, but I just wanted to get this thing hooked up to the system and running. And as you guys can see, it's actually charging a little bit because the cells were probably a little bit less than 50% for storage. And this thing's working really awesome. I don't know what spot we're gonna permanently put this in because we're gonna be changing up this whole system pretty soon. And you guys are definitely gonna see all the videos on that, which I'm super pumped about. But anyways, this thing's really awesome. The screen's really nice. And I'm very happy to have this in our battery arsenal and I'm super excited to see how it holds up. And if I need to get any more high capacity batteries, we may end up doing a second one. It has been charging for about a day. We have a ton of sun today and the battery's pretty much fully charged. It's really awesome. You get a lot of capacity for the size of this battery. And honestly, for the price, these are almost hard to beat. And I forgot to mention when I unbox the cells, the cells are Yijing brand cells as well. They are brand new, grade A, according to them. So they're supposed to be pretty good. We'll see, I guess, how long they last and as they age, how well the battery holds up. I'll continue to update you guys with any problems that we have with the battery. So some pros and cons. So pros, definitely, like I said before, is the cost. The next one is gonna be serviceability. With a battery like this, you can open this thing up really easily. You can service the cells, you can service the BMS, you can replace individual components if you ever need to replace a cell or maybe let's say 10 years down the road, you wear these cells out somehow and you wanna upgrade the cells. Maybe there's some more energy gen cells. You can replace everything in this box. Everything can be reused. The BMS can be upgraded separately from everything else. So that's a really good pro in my opinion because you can continue to use this package even if you wear it out. You can always upgrade it later. So these latches right here actually allow you to stack these. So you can stack a few of these high and you can get a ton of energy density. If you had three of these, that'd be over 45 kilowatt hours of power and it would only be about three feet tall. So that's really awesome, very energy dense. The only cons I can really think of is this is not gonna be UL listed. If you're trying to put this in a system where you need it to be UL listed, it has to be fully code compliant. I'm not sure how that's gonna go. For all you off-gridders and DIYers, I think you're not gonna have any issues with the batteries. I fully have faith in these batteries that they're safe and they're good to go. However, if you need the extra stringent 
certifications. You may have some issues with that because this is not gonna have that. You do have to assemble it. I don't think that's a con, but maybe some people who are more, who aren't really comfortable working with batteries, that may be a bad thing, but I'm gonna be real honest, guys. This thing was so easy to put together. Even with the instructions, I didn't think the instructions were that good, but I followed them step by step. Had a little bit of, you know, best safety practices in mind handling batteries, and we had no issues doing it, but I could kind of see that being a con for some people. And the weight. So this thing has no wheels out of the box. I really wish they would come with wheels with this kit. I'm sure you can pay extra and get the wheels added or buy them separately. In fact, I know you can, but I do wish the kit came with wheels out of the box only because this thing weighs so much. Me and my buddy together could barely pick this battery up. I kind of have to slide it across the floor. And as you guys can see, it's literally sitting on the floor because of how heavy it is. So I do think that's something to keep in mind. It's not surprising when you have 16 kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate battery, it's not gonna be light. None of them are gonna be light. They're all gonna be extremely heavy, but I do wish it had some sort of wheels on it just to make it a little bit easier to move around. But that's gonna do it for the video, guys. Let me know what y'all think about this battery. And if you guys are using these at home, let me know the kind of look you guys are having with them. Would you recommend this battery to a friend? Are you guys using these batteries? What else do you guys wanna see me do with this battery? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thank y'all so much as always, and I'll see y'all in the next video.